Today is a pretty big day because we are about to build a new house for my legacy challenge. Now I do a lot of building on my channel, but it's usually just for random sims or like no sims at all. I just build for fun. I don't often actually get to play in the houses that I build and that's mostly just because I build like so many more houses than I could ever need. My sims do not move around that much. Not enough to need like four or five houses a week, you know? But I'm kind of at a point where I'm starting a new generation of my legacy challenge and so I'm in need of a new house and that's what we're gonna make today. Let me start the build and I'll explain. So basically a legacy challenge is where you try and play through 10 generations in The Sims and usually you'd play on the same lot the entire time and you start off with like a really small amount of money, like 1800 simoleons. And at this point I'm getting pretty close to the seventh generation of this family. I've been playing with them for like two years in real life and we have like 80 episodes of a Let's Play on YouTube. I realize that might seem pretty daunting but now is actually a really good time to start watching the Let's Play. Each generation is kind of like a little mini series and so if you haven't seen it yet, now that we're starting a new one it's kind of a good time to tune in. Trust me, at this point, if you haven't seen like episode 20, you're fine. All those sims are dead, so it doesn't matter anyway. Like I said, each gen is kind of its own thing. I will warn you, this let's play is a little bit chaotic. Uh, you can probably tell by the sims that are standing outside right now. Yes, the Grim Reaper is here. Uh, also, I literally have a ghost in this household right now. Um, this is an interesting way to introduce you to the family, but let me, let me talk you through it, okay? So, last episode, I almost killed one of my sons. Trust me, don't worry, he's fine. He was brought back to life, the Grim Reaper spared him, but I, um, put him in a pit of piranhas, and then he died, and then the Grim Reaper came, and then I was like, please don't take him, I'm literally a ghost already, and then he was like, okay, fine. So, he's good, he's back, he's not dead. Grim hasn't left yet, though, and, um, the ghost in my household? Yeah, so, she's dead. <laughs> she caught on fire because my toilet catches on fire randomly. Um, um, and she, she burned up and died. I didn't realize that she was on fire because I was too busy fixing the toilet and she had ran outside and so I didn't know that she was on fire. I didn't put her out. I thought she was at work. So she's dead. Um, and then in the next episode after that, her spouse, Blake, yeah, they almost died too of hysteria. So that one, luckily I was able to plead for and bring back to life as well. But recently this gen of this family has been completely nightmarish. I mean, everybody is dead or almost dead or has previously almost died. I mean, it's it's just, it's been a lot. So to explain the house style that I'm going for, desert farmhouse is what I'm trying to build. I realize that makes little to no sense, but here's the thing. So you know how my sim is dead, my ghost sim, Anna? <laughs> Her daughter is like the new main sim, basically. And so my thought is that I want her daughter to try and make ambrosia to bring Anna back to life. By the time I make it, Anna is probably going to end up being younger than her daughter because ghosts don't age. So it's gonna be kind of wacky. It's, it should be fun. But basically my sim Pepper, who's the daughter, is gonna be a chef and her almost wife, they're dating but not engaged, so her girlfriend, is, is gonna be a farmer. And so together we should be able to craft the ambrosia to bring Anna back to life. I realize this is so absurd. I, I think you'd enjoy the Let's Play. But yeah, Desert Farmhouse is sort of an interesting challenge. Now I mentioned how in a legacy you usually try and stay in the same lot the whole time. Traditionally you'd live on like a 50 by 50 lot, maybe a 64 by 64 lot, but I was trying to branch out and I never really play in Oasis Springs or build in Oasis Springs because I find the desert very challenging and so I wanted in this legacy to live in the desert the whole time. It's been kind of fun because I've been sort of trying a lot of different build styles. We had like a black and white modern house and then we had like a sort of dream home decorator colorful modern house. We had like a Mediterranean build. We had like a kind of industrial looking house and now we have this desert farmhouse. <laughs> this one's actually more of a craftsman style. I won't lie, I'm actually obsessed with this house. I think it is the best one we've had so far. I really really, really love the exterior. I really struggled with like what I wanted to do with it and the color scheme I wanted to use and especially the landscaping. That's like the biggest hurdle for me of living in Oasis Springs is landscaping this desert lot. Also how bad the lighting is. I guess I should tell you, um, I am building this house backwards right now. <laughs> so don't worry, the front is the front but it's on the back of the lot. So we're facing the back of the house right now. I'm gonna rotate it around. I just find the lighting on this lot is so bad that I don't like to build like with the front being 
being the front because the lighting is icky and it's all in shadows. So I built the house backwards and then rotated it back around. So don't be alarmed. It it does actually look better than this. Trust the process, okay? It'll work. It's it's gonna come together, I swear. Anyway, I struggle with landscaping a lot in the desert because it's just so unfamiliar to me. I try and do like lots of deserty plants like cactuses and things like that, kind of on gravel because I feel like that's realistic, but it's just so foreign. I live in Florida, okay? This is like as tropical as you can get. You cannot get farther from like the desert in Oasis Springs to what I'm used to in real life, so this is just very different for me and kind of challenging. I also really struggle with the back of this house. You can see there's lots of um, mess happening. <laughs> I did manage to get there in the end, but the back was weird because I wanted to have a greenhouse. I was kind of trying to have an attached greenhouse space because obviously I'm going to be doing a lot of gardening, and so I wanted to have a greenhouse and some outdoor garden space, but I was having a hard time trying to figure out where to put it. I ended up putting it in the back and it's got that big glass roof and it's gonna have full glass windows. I think it's kind of a cool addition. It's definitely weird and not something I usually add in, but I feel like it works for what we need in this family. We also get a huge pool. We've got like some farm space. We have chickens. I mean, it's definitely odd for the desert, okay? I will admit that, but it works for me and that's what I need. Also, other struggle was the floor plan in this one. Oh my goodness. Obviously it has that huge diagonal section, which looks great from the exterior. The diagonal is super fun from the outside, but as we all know, diagonals are extremely frustrating to furnish on the inside, and so the, the floor plan was just nightmarish on this house. Oh my goodness, it was terrible, but we did manage to make it work in the end. I think I cut out a lot of my floor plan struggling because I streamed this, I built this on Twitch live, and it took me hours and hours, obviously, and I just spent so long working on the floor plan that it wasn't worth making you watch me like do it and undo it and do it and undo it over and over again. One of my favorite parts of this house though is that like sneaky upstairs that we have. I managed to put two bedrooms up there and I think it works out so well. It's not like huge. It's a nice small upstairs area, but it's so great for the size of my family. Right now we have a lot of Sims in the household. We're kind of in that weird transition between generations. So I still have like my new Sim Pepper, but also both her parents still live here. She has three siblings that still live here. So everybody kind of needs a bedroom, but eventually those rooms are gonna become kids rooms when Pepper has kids. So I managed to put two bedrooms downstairs and two bedrooms upstairs. Her parents live downstairs, her room's downstairs, and then her younger siblings have rooms upstairs. I guess her twin brother has his own room and then her other two younger siblings have to share a room. Eventually her brother's gonna move out and then I'll have her siblings have their own rooms. They're both teens and he's a young adult, so I feel bad making him share, but like it, it's what I need to do for now. I don't wanna have like too big of a house because I don't wanna have four kids again next time. <laughs> That was a mistake. Too many kids in this house. Give me like two or three. That's the max I co I'm comfortable with next time. We're painting the house now. You'll see that I finally settled on the color of the roof that I wanted to use. I was going back and forth a lot. My chat and I were kind of trying to decide what to do. We first had like some shingles, then we had a black metal roof. We finally chose to use this one from Snowy Escape. It's brown and it's, I don't know what the material is called to be honest with you, but it's kind of like a mix between the metal and the shingles. I feel like it's smooth, but it has a little bit of texture with the lines. I think this works out really well. I think it matches the color scheme super well too with like the, the brown wood everywhere. And I tried to use a lot of stone, shingles, and also like some paneling on the outside of the house. And I just think it worked out so well. I am absolutely obsessed with the exterior of this build. I think the landscaping is so cool. Like I just feel like this really came together. It was exactly my vision. I also was trying to build this on stream. And when I first started, I think people were like, Kayla, this is really weird. Like. I don't know what you're going for. But once we get to this point, I think it starts to make sense, okay? Like once the stone's all in, the landscaping's in, you can see like the backyard coming together. I feel like at this point, we're all like, ah, okay, I get it now. It's less weird. Ho well, hopefully you think it's less weird. <laughs> I think it's good. Also, side note, a few of the landscaping items are very ugly right now. A few of the plants are like really brown. That's because it's winter in my game. I know you can't really tell because it's the desert, so it's not like snowing, but it's winter in my game right now, and so a lot of the plants look more dead than usual. They won't always be so brown. They'll be, they'll be a little bit more green. Some of those cactuses and stuff are like really icky looking. I think part of why I like this so much is because it's so different from what I usually do. Like I never, ever, ever do stuff like this. I mean, I've done this like gravel and cactus thing before, but not in my regular builds. It's just been like for occasional things that sort of fit the style. So it's fun for me to branch out more because I know that I'm guilty of um, getting into my little box of 
of comfort builds, <laughs> and this is not really one of them. Although the craftsman thing is definitely my comfort zone, but the desert craftsman is not. See? See? While I'm doing this, I might elaborate a little bit on the piranha pond. I feel like I brought that up and then just kind of brushed over it, so I, I might explain that quickly. <laughs> so basically, if you didn't know, in Get Famous, there's this like shark pond that got added to the game. We do have one in our backyard. You'll see I'll add it back in soon. I have it in my household inventory right now, but <laughs> there's this like shark pond that they added with Get Famous, and it's sort of become a meme on my channel. You might be familiar with it now at this point, but I always knew that you could die in this shark pond, but I didn't really play with it that often because it's weird. It's like a giant rocky pond, like who needs that? And in it, you can fill it with sharks, you can fill it with piranhas, I think you can fill it with regular fish that aren't deadly, I don't really know. But either way, you're still has a chance of drowning in this pond. They don't actually get eaten by the sharks or anything, but they can drown in the pond. They have a chance of falling in and they can also jump in themselves. They can fall in if they're like trying to feed it or clean it or anything, and then you can have them choose to jump into it. And I was making this joke on stream one day at this point like a year ago about how you can die in it but I had never seen a sim die in it and I was like watch I'll show you she won't die when I jump in I place the pond I have my legacy founder this is a different legacy it's my one on twitch but the legacy founder jumps into the pond dead instantly oh my god <laughs> I've now killed the main sim of the whole legacy. Luckily, she already had kids, so it wasn't like game over or anything, you know, so the kids would just carry on the legacy, whatever. Next generation, I'm telling the story again on stream, like explaining how the legacy founder had died and how wild that was, like what are the chances? I have her son, the new legacy heir, jump into the pond, and I'm like, watch, it was a fluke, she died, but he won't. Oh, what happens? Oh yeah, he dies too. So now I've killed two sims in a row in this pond. Luckily, he also had kids. Unfortunately, he had four toddlers, so his husband was left to raise the toddlers on his own. It was horrible. I sincerely regret this decision I made. It was, it was a big mistake. But the pond has just become such a meme that now I always keep it. I've got it in both of my legacy saves, this one and also the one on my Twitch channel. And just last week, uh, the reason that Grim Reaper is still here, you see, I, I thought it would be funny if I just had my sim jump into it. Your sims have a bigger chance of dying in the pond if they're in a bad mood and he was mortified. You know how teens can get those mood swings from parenthood? Well, he had just aged up into a young adult from being a teen and he was still mortified from that mood swing. And I was joking like, haha, what if he dies from being mortified? Like that would be terrible because his parent just had that happen from <laughs> being playful a couple weeks ago. And then I was like, Hmm, what if I put him in the pond? Just to see what happens. What if I just do that? Haha, <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? Why did I say that? I don't know. But then I put him in the pond. Oh, lo and behold, he dies <laughs> instantly. And so luckily I pleaded for him and the Grim Reaper was like, you can have him back. Don't worry. And so he didn't die, die. He just like almost died. But um, that's the pond. I, I don't really have an excuse for that. I don't know why I did that. Honest, honestly, I, I can't justify this. I, I just did it. And then he almost died. I mean, I, I feel like almost died isn't even the right way to explain it. He literally died. He just came back to life. I killed him. He was dead. Grim was there. Anyway, I'm working on the house still. <laughs> this room downstairs, there's like a bedroom downstairs. That's gonna be the grandparents room for the dead sim and her spouse. <laughs> um, they're gonna live in here, the ghost and, and the elder. Um, I guess the elder won't be here for long but for a bit. And so I managed to get them like their nice own bedroom. They don't have an ensuite bathroom, but there is a bathroom right next to it. And then they also have like a really lovely little patio outside next to their room with some rocking chairs. The old Sim Blake likes to knit. So I thought they could sit out there and knit. It's kind of cute. Also important to note, we have a fire toilet in this legacy. I mentioned it earlier how that's how Anna died. Um, Her toilet caught on fire. I feel I didn't really explain that very well now that I think about it. I might have just brushed over that. Okay, so the fire toilet. Um, <laughs> basically, I have this toilet that catches on fire. I've had it for a long time now, like for literally like probably a year and a half in real life. And this fire toilet, basically with Eco Lifestyle, you can upgrade toilets to be composting containers, but if you don't use the compost, they can spontaneously combust and catch on fire. Obviously, I don't use the compost, so it catches on fire very often. And sometimes you don't notice and then your sim dies. But anyway, I've had this toilet the whole time. It comes with me always. I only got it because my first generation 
Sim, like, maxed the handiness aspiration, and so she got the ability to, like, insta upgrade things. And when you do that, it, like, instant fully upgrades things, and so it upgrades, like, Unbreakable, and, like, never gets dirty, and also the compost bin. And so I didn't even know it did it, and then all of a sudden it started catching fire, and now it's become, like, a thing. So I keep it, I keep it around, and I put that fire toilet in that, like, biggest bathroom in the house next to the grandparents' room. I know you're gonna ask, so just so you know, that's where it is. I did not forget it, I brought it with me, don't worry. Also, you may have noticed I did just put down a worm bin. I was like, oh, I can get some bugs, like some bees and some worms, because my sim's gonna be a farmer. And then I realized that if I have worms, um, my toilet won't catch fire anymore, and so I said, never mind, and I got rid of the worms. Don't worry, <laughs> we no longer have worms. I would prefer to have my toilet catch fire randomly, it's just more exciting. So the worms are gone, toilet is still there. So upstairs, like I said, we have two bedrooms and one bathroom. These are gonna be for the kids, like the younger siblings of the new main sim. And so her brother has this pink painting themed room. I'm probably gonna move him out, maybe even in the next episode, but I wanted him to at least have a room now. I feel like I want him to get like a partner and then move out. I wanna make sure we have him set up first. <laughs> and so I've got his room, but eventually I think his siblings will each have their own room. For now, the teens are sharing a room. They're not the same age, they're not twins or anything. One of them's a little bit older, but for now they're sharing a room and I tried to go for an ocean theme. I realize that's a bit odd, okay? But it's like all blue and orange and I have this like ocean print wallpaper in there. I don't know, I had never used that before. I thought it was kind of cute. I figured we could try it out for this one. And I thought it was also kind of funny how it's like a desert house, but they've got an ocean themed bedroom. It amused me. I know it's silly, but I thought it was funny at the time. So <laughs> that's what I was doing. That's the goal in this room. I almost used bunk beds, but then I got to thinking and I was like, you know what? I can't think of anything worse than sharing a bunk bed with my younger sister. No offense to her, love you, Shanna. But I, I really, at this point in my life, would rather not do that. <laughs> I, I don't want to be in the top or bottom bunk. I don't want to be involved in that. I want my own bed. So I, I scratched the bunk bed idea and I gave them each their own separate beds. At least in this way, they have like their own corners of the room too, which is good. I mean, it's a big room. We don't need to have bunk beds in here. It's better for like smaller spaces, I feel like, where there's less space. But in this room, there's like plenty of room to spread out and have their own kind of halves to the room. So I wanted to do that. It's funny how things change because when I was a kid, I wanted nothing more than a bunk bed. I wanted a loft bed so bad. Like my whole life, I wanted a loft bed so, 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 I used to beg for one. Never got one. <laughs> because <laughs> why buy a new bed if you don't need one? But I wanted a bunk bed so bad my whole life growing up. Now, don't want that at all. I feel like I'd fall off and die. I'm I'm very clumsy. I can't be trusted with that kind of thing. But as a kid, I used to like daydream about having a loft bed. I wanted to have like all my toys underneath the bed. I used to want to have, I had like so many little pet shops and I used to want to have like all my little pet shops like laid out underneath my loft bed. That was my vision and my parents never let me have it. Can you believe it? <laughs> they used to be like, you're not going to want one when you're older. It's going to be a waste of money. You're gonna change your mind. And turns out they were right. So, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not upset. But they, they were right. I would have not wanted it anymore when I was like 17, so. <sighs> fine. It really is terrible having to admit your parents were right, you know? Especially because they're gonna watch this. My mom's gonna watch this and text me, I bet. Just you wait, I'll tell you if she does. She's gonna watch this and text me and be like, I know I was right. You were. You were right, mom. Fine. Anyway, I'm almost done furnishing the house now. I feel like I may have accidentally cut out some of the kitchen. I feel like I didn't watch that happen in the speed build. So if that's true, don't worry, I'll, I'll show it to you. We're gonna do a tour at the end of the video and I'll show you the finished product because I, I feel like I cut it out. But at this point, I'm putting in some like last minute touches and also adding in some like extra details from my inventory because, you know, for example, I have a baseball bat and some duffel bags of cash and other such um, important items that I wanted to put down in the living room. So I was like slowly going through my stuff and adding those things back in. I also made sure to get a cat tree. We've got a cat named Cookie and I wanted him to have his own spot. Also, I don't think I filmed this, but the very last thing I did was go through and add a ton of family photos. One of the best parts I feel like of playing with a family for this long is that I've been really trying to get pictures the whole time. Like I've been getting wedding pictures and pregnancy pictures and baby photos and family photos and pet photos like this entire time. And so now when I put them up on the walls, I've got pictures of the entire legacy. We've got like wedding photos from Gen 1 and at this point we're on Gen 7. And I just love that. So the build is pretty much done now and I think I want to pop into the game and give you like a proper up close tour. So here we are. We're on this lot across the street from the land grabs. And by the way, the land grabs, they're long dead, but
but their descendants aren't, and they're actually related to me. That guy in the gray, that's my dead Sim's brother. The ghost, that's her brother. And those are all of his kids. His husband is dead though. That was a recent development. May he rest in peace. But anyway, here's my house. Why are they all standing in these odd places? Like, why did you choose to stand here anyway? This is the finished product. I am so, so, so proud of this building. This is the front yard. We've got a little mailbox right here. We have a big, huge walkway, lots of landscaping. And then in the back, it's even bigger. <laughs> We've got like this lovely patio space. This Sim Pepper is the new heir, like the new main Sim. She's gonna be in the culinary career, so she's gonna need a bar, so I have that here. We also have a fire pit, we have a grill, we've got a huge pool. Here are my chickens. <laughs> we also have some lounge chairs and stuff. Back here is my little farm space and my bees. Pepper's girlfriend doesn't live with us yet, but she's gonna be using all this later once she moves in. Uh, there's my dead cow plant. It's named Plum after Plumbella. That was before it was dead though. I didn't name the dead one after her, that'd be weird. Back here, this looks a little bit ugly because it's winter. Usually it's more green. Like that is supposed to be green grass, not brown dead grass, but I put my chest table because of course. Here's my piranha pond. It's kind of like a little secret grotto back here that I was going for. I mean, look at that view as you go for a swim and possibly die in a pit full of piranhas. Uh, these two graves, don't worry about them. One belongs to my maid and one belongs to Vlad. I did murder Vlad, I did not murder the maid. So just ignore that. And then when you actually come inside, we have the Grim Reaper <laughs> right here, of course. There's the Sim that almost died, lovely. But when you first walk in, I put a piano because Pepper is supposed to like music. She has like the music lover trait and stuff, so I wanted her to have that. This is our living room. I am obsessed with this layout. I love the diagonal in here. I know I complained a lot about it, but I think it does look pretty good in this space. These are some really old paintings. Um, this one in particular really <laughs> amuses me. I don't know why. It just gets me every time, so I hung it up. Here's an example of a family photo. Um, that's one of my older gen sims. That's the cow plant that killed her dad, and that's my raccoon. So, um, lovely <laughs> family photos. That is the dead cow plant, actually. That's, that's Plum. No longer with us, though. What are you doing? Oh, he scares me. Okay, over here we have, this is gonna be the new main bedroom, like the primary suite. It's kind of a weird shape. It's very long and skinny, but I wanted to put a fireplace in here because it has, like, the huge chimney and stuff. So this is gonna be Pepper's room. I wanted it to be kind of colorful. Back in our old house, she had, like, orange floral wallpaper, so I wanted to kind of embrace that a little bit, and I think it's cute. We have this nice hairy rug. We've got a beautiful ensuite bathroom with a tub and everything. I love the little like towel on the stool and stuff there. There's a little bathroom downstairs right here. And then through this archway, we come into the kitchen and dining space. I wanted to have like a really nice kitchen because she's gonna be a chef. So we have all this here. I like this little coffee nook, especially. I think it's really cute. Pet bowl, we got some aprons, money trash can, all the necessities. Here's our little dining space. And I've got a lot of pictures in here. I wanted to have one of every generation. That's gen one. And then we have this gallery wall of some more generations. This is Anna and Blake, that's the dead Sim. <laughs> but now she's a ghost, so she looks a little bit different. <laughs> okay, so down here, this is the hallway. There's the dead Sim's wedding photo, cute, I know. This is the fire toilet, be warned, it's right here. And then this is the grandparents suite. I have like a little photo for them. We got a bag of money, they have the little private patio. I love this, I think this is super cute. Okay, and then upstairs, it's kind of small, but we have a little bit more photos on the wall here. We have that artsy bedroom, we have of the water bedroom. <laughs> and then we've got another bathroom right here. I didn't decorate the bathrooms too much. I wanted to, but I was running out of money and I felt like maybe I should leave some for the bills just in case. And then we can, you know, add to it later. We don't need to spend everything all at once. But that is the whole house. I hope that you enjoyed this little introduction into my Sims. I know it's kind of a weird one because I had a lot to say, but I love this family. If you want to watch the Let's Play, I'll link it for you. I'll have like a playlist at the end of the video. And like I said, now is actually a pretty good time to start watching if you haven't yet. Because we're kind of in the middle of switching generations, it really is like the start of a new mini series. So if you haven't seen the old things, you won't miss much. I mean, it's fun to go back and watch it, but don't let it be too daunting, okay? You can can totally start now and you'd be fine. And also, if you want to watch my Twitch streams, I built this live and I've got a different legacy that I play on Twitch that is equally as chaotic, if not more chaotic. I literally have a pile of like 60 gravestones in my front yard in that one. So if you want to watch that, I'm going to link my Twitch channel down below. I stream every day on Twitch. We have a lot of fun. So one last plug. This is my merch. It's on lilsimsyshop.com. And with that, I will stop throwing links at you and I'm going to go. So have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. <laughs> Bye everybody. Had to get the merch plug in there. Just just one little one. But like I said, I got that playlist linked right here. And the last episode is also linked if you want to watch that.